in this video i will talk about how to do a normality test in uh, multiple regression as well as linear regression uh, one of the assumption is that the error is distributed normally right uh, well there is no issue um, you know in the estimation procedure uh, we can always estimate uh, the regression equation even without having normal uh, normally distributed error but the t statistic and the p statistic cannot be uh, you know interpretable so uh, since we we need to interpret uh, t statistic and p statistics so uh, checking normality of the errors is very important so how do we do that well um, before doing modeling also you need to ensure that your continuous uh, independent variables are normally distributed because if your uh, continuous independent independent variables are normally distributed uh, most likely your error will be distributed normally so you can use this uh, you know video both for testing error um, you know normality of the error um, or else you can also use this uh, you know same exercise you can use it uh, for uh, you know testing the normality of any uh, independent uh, continuous independent variable so for this exercise uh, i have taken data from sas help uh, you can go to explorer and see where the sas help is so there is a data set named as cars i have taken that data set from sas help and uh, i have taken three variables from that data set um, weight sorry four variables uh, mpg underscore ct that is mileage weight horsepower and length so my model is like um, uh, mileage is my dependent variable weight horsepower and length are my independent variables so i have built the model so now it's time to check whether uh, my errors uh, errors are distributed normally or not so to do that <coughs> what i have done is uh, in the output statement so you can see output out then give your data set name so i want to create another data set which will have all the variables and the error value also so when I run this above regression, the error value will be same. So uh, you know, look at the syntax carefully. Output out, then you uh, put your uh, data set name there, and in bracket you uh, write keep equal to your uh, independent, uh, independent and dependent variables, and then your predicted value and residuals. So we have denoted uh, residuals as R and uh, predicted value as P. Okay, so R and P will be there in the data set. So let's run this. So this will be saved in my work library. So error data is the one we created. So if I go to that data set, you will see it has all the variables independent and dependent variables and then you have two additional columns one for predicted value uh, for mileage and then the other one is for residuals so what matter to us now is uh, the residual column okay um, We can uh, do a normality check by uh, plotting a kernel density uh, curve. So what is kernel density? It is similar to uh, uh, histogram. Uh, it, it's very similar, just that the bean, the bean length is very uh, small uh, in kernel density. And it, it uh, shows the distribution of the uh, beans with respect to the, the uh, with, with respect to uh, you know the, the range of the data so uh, it's very similar to histogram uh, so the syntax is like this pro kde and then in data statement you give uh, the data where you have the error and um, 
you know it will save some kind of a density so you create another data in the out statement and then I have named it as DEN you can name it anything okay so which variable are we interested in we are uh, interested in uh, the variable R so R is nothing but our residual or error okay so error is you know otherwise known as residual so I keep interchanging the uh, names so <coughs> And then I sort, uh, I sort the data set uh, by uh, residual and then I plot density with respect to uh, the uh, residual. So here I, I, I get the density, the first step itself I will get the density. Let me run it first. So then data set is created, if you look at it you will have the density so against each residual you have the you have its density okay density is you know some kind of a frequency type uh, then you sort it by uh, the residual and then we will uh, plot density with the residual okay so look at the syntax carefully uh, yes so it plots it for us so we can use gplot for that um, as you can see our data set is nearly normal but uh, there is uh, you know deviation from the normality uh, in the right tail part you can see after this there is hardly the data is normal so in the right most tail uh, or you know your data our data is uh, not uh, behaving uh, normally uh, the errors are not behaving normally rather uh, so uh, you need to do some adjustment to make sure that it's normally distributed make sure you know you know if you have too many outliers or your independent uh, continuous independent variables are probably are not very normal and there are ways in which you can make your uh, independent uh, variables uh, normal so you can try out that so uh, <coughs> another way of uh, knowing whether your uh, errors are normally distributed is using proc univariate okay so um, we will plot a kind of uh, a graph which is known as the QQ plot or the quantile quantile plot. So for that we use the uh, following syntax proc univariate and then in data we use the same data set where the error is saved and then uh, the QQ plot need to check uh, for normality so we need to use the option normal here and the variable that we are interested to check in is variable R right that is where uh, that is what is residual or the error then QQ plot so uh, and give the variable name R and then we need to see see so what is QQ plot so QQ plot is a uh, quantile quantile plot um, uh, you know that, that's its full form so um, <coughs> the data set is mapped to a theoretical normal distribution so assume that okay we have a theoretical normal distribution data which is perfectly normal and then we have our own data so we are comparing our own data to the normally distributed data okay so the normal distributed data is already there inside this task we don't need to provide it so what proc enumerate does for us is that it try to it tries to compare it with the our data and say that how much deviation is our data from the normal data okay let's uh, run this I'll go straight to the QQ part you can see the uh, one time plot here so the straight line is the theoretical normal distribution so the straight line is drawn by using uh, a data which is uh, perfectly uh, normally distributed okay there is no deviation from the normality and then the uh, blue one is is actually our data 
now we can see you know there is a deviation from the normality so we, ideally we expect that our our uh, data or the blue lines should overlap uh, on the uh, on the uh, straight line black line right or at least it should be very close but there are cases you know you can see cases where you know the uh, line is you know you know deviating from the uh, from the black line, the blue line is deviating from the black line. That means there is um, uh, the errors are uh, deviating from the uh, normality at some places. So that's how we check for normality. Um, there are other ways also in which we can test normality. Uh, there are statistical tests. Um, uh, you know, we can also, uh, you know, in, in, in another uh, video, I will discuss about statistical test, uh, doing statistical test in, uh, uh, you know, testing for normality. Uh, you know, I will be talking about Anderson Darling test, Kolmogorov's mirror test, and so on.